Hey, hey, welcome back. I had a few people email me and ask me what kind of maintenance I do on my polydarium here. I figured I'd throw a quick video together for you and go over it. Luckily, since it's bioactive, there's really not much to it. But as you can see, the glass is getting a little dirty and she's getting a little overgrown. So we're gonna clean her up, trim her up, and then I got a few other maintenance things that we're gonna take care of. My first order of business is to clean up this glass. The sludge that we're seeing on the window is a combination of calcium powder from the flies from the feeding of the dart frogs, as well as slugs and snail sludge, which is pretty gross. Since I don't want to scare any of the dart frogs, I always try to open it up slowly and make sure that none of the plants fall out because they could be containing a dart frog. Kind of like this guy right here, chilling inside of the Rex begonia, which has been growing completely out of control again. I usually try to push him away with my fingers and encourage him to find a spot further on down, uh, deeper in the polydarium. Unfortunately, these little guys aren't that shy and they trust me too much, so it takes a little bit of extra encouragement to get them to move along. Once I've ensured that the frogs are no longer near the front of the polydarium, I hit the glass with some distilled water, as well as some paper towels, and then I just rinse and repeat two or three times. It's kind of tedious, but it's the best way to do it without using any sort of chemicals. I do it about once every two weeks, which realistically is just because I'm kind of lazy, I'll be honest. When the insides of the glass are clean, I hit the outsides. I always find it works better that way. Otherwise I miss areas or I think that areas that I've cleaned are dirty that are actually on the inside of the glass rather than the outside. I also clean off any gunk that builds up on the rim. I trim back the plants usually about once a month to two months depending on how fast the plants are growing. The Rex begonia as well as the crawling fig will drown out a bunch of the other plants and kill off light from getting to the bottom of the tank. So those are my main two culprits that usually need to be trimmed. I close one side of the polydarium to prevent any frogs from escaping and focus on one side. I usually start with the crawling fig which as you can see here is going crazy. I try to find a few good strands and start there and cut them with some regular medical scissors, but really any scissors will work. I try to go for some of the main pieces and main strands to try to get as much of it as possible because this stuff grows like crazy and it's a never ending battle to be honest. I should have put this towards the back of my tank, but didn't really know what I was doing at the time. The creeping fig will send out shooters to try to establish new areas to grow, so I slowly pull those out as well. The reason I go slow is so I don't accidentally hurt any frogs that could be caught in the crossfire. Gives them plenty of chances to hop away, kind of like this guy right here actually, but to be honest, he already knows the drill. He just stays put, hunkers down, and he knows that I won't mess with him in his little comfy abode. Luckily, the vines on these plants are pretty strong, so they don't really break, and the roots aren't that deep, so they also pull out pretty easily. So you just kind of trim a piece off, pull it out, and hope for the best. It might look like it's kind of tedious, but honestly, it doesn't take more than 10 minutes every two months or so. As you can see, there's quite a bit of it, but I save that for later. Next up is the Rex begonia, which to be honest, does look really cool, but it grows out of control pretty fast. Here you can see the last time I trimmed it and where the new shoots have grown out since then. So we're gonna need to go ahead and get that trimmed up. Since this is one of the frog's favorite plants to hang out in, I do wanna be extra sure that the coast is clear before I start cutting away and pulling pieces out of here. 
Also, after I cut a piece, I always double check that there aren't any frogs hiding in the little crevices because they do like to get in there. Better safe than sorry, and gentle does it. Don't worry, I left some and it'll grow back. That might look pretty open now, but that's gonna grow back with a quickness. The trimmings from the creeping fig are also really good to use for mulching the rest of the polydarium. I lay them down as a leaf litter base and just sprinkle them all the way throughout on the land and in the water feature. I also give the polydarium a thorough mist down via hand with distilled water about two to three times a day. About once a week I'll take a piece of fruit, in this instance some mango, sometimes a banana, apple, or pear, and place them around certain spots in my polydarium. I do this to attract the fruit flies from feeding my dart frogs to the front of the tank, which draws out the frogs. It allows me to get a good look at them and get some pretty good footage as well. Of course, I'll share a little bit of that with you now. Here's a poison dart frog date night. I guess they're watching their version of the TV here. About once a month I also put various other types of vegetables towards the back of the polydarium to feed all the little animals living in there. Here's an old piece of potato from about three weeks ago. My colony of dart frogs is pretty ravenous so I add fresh fruit flies each day. I found that adding the calcium powder before the fruit flies is beneficial because then they can't crawl up the sides of the cub. I dump these straight through the little holes in the top of the polydarium. That way I don't have to open the glass and I can scatter them throughout evenly. So that way I can feed all the frogs in their own little spots that they're chilling. Since this setup is bioactive, there isn't really that much maintenance to do and that does wrap it up. Make sure you like and subscribe and I'll be sure to post more content soon.